All right, well, let's continue on the fender here and on into the side of the car. I'll go back to the studio lighting here and let's select this and tab back into edit mode. And I think what I'd like to do is before I try and deal with this here, I'd like to extrude these back first. And in fact, I think I want to make these conform a little bit better. I'll turn off the subdivision surface for just a moment here. And let's uh, just grab this and move it down to about here. I feel like um, I almost need another point. Like I, I want one here for this edge here. And then I'd like one right here to get that curve. So I think what I'll do is just press Control R and click and then move that into place here. Okay, so we've got that. Now what I'd like to do is just begin extruding back. And I think I want to extrude back these. I'm going to press Control and click, and then that selects everything between the first point selected and the Control click there. So it looks to me like this is fairly flat. Down here it may curve a little, and we'll deal with that when we deal with this piece, but this looks pretty flat and straight and then begins to curve up here at the top. So I think I'm going to just take advantage of that and extrude this back, maybe to here, to this door here. So let's try that. I'm gonna press E and Y and just pull these back to here. And then I'm gonna straighten this by pressing S, Y, and zero. And there we go. That's straightened out now. And I'm gonna pull it back to about right here. We will continue taking this on back through the edge of the door here, and then we're gonna come back and probably use our shrink wrap tool to get things like the door and even the front fender. So we're really creating a smoothing mesh here. We may be able to use some of it as our final car shell, but I really think most of this is probably going to be the smoothing mesh. All right, so we've got those. I want to add one, two, three, four edges here, maybe five to connect this up. So let's try that. I'm gonna press Control R, scroll the mouse wheel, and you can see in the bottom left-hand corners how many cuts you have. And I've got five here, so I'm gonna hit Enter two times to drop them right there. And actually, I'd like this to be a little bit straighter. Um, we can have it become straighter here with a function of the loop cut tool. So I'll press Control Z to try this again, and then this time I'm gonna press Control R, scroll it out until I get five cuts, and then I will click once, and now you can see up on top, you've got even off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the E key, and then you can see up at the top left, it says flipped, and that is off. So I'm gonna press the F key, and watch what happens. You can see how they begin aligning to one side or the other. Like this is aligned to the left side, this is aligned more to the right side. So I'm gonna go with the right side so I have one straight up and down on the right, and then click. Now these go from being curved here to follow this line to being straight here to follow this line. And this straight up and down will continue back to here. All right, so now that we have that, Let's try and connect these up and then work with this curve. So I think we probably want to move these points back. I think I probably just want to delete these for now, these faces. So I'll hit delete and delete faces. And then maybe I could just take these and move them back a hair here. Take these and move them back a hair, something like that. I could probably move these down a bit as well. We'll do more in terms of the actual arc of the curve here in just a minute. But let's get those in place. Okay. So now what we could do is begin to connect this up. So if we take, uh, well, let's take these, these points here like this and hit the F key. And look at how it's strangely colored. You see that? That tells me that we've got an issue that one part of this mesh is flipped. And this probably happened because we created these individual edges point by point. So the way to figure this out is to come up here to this menu right here, the viewports overlay, 
and turn on face orientation. So if I click here, ah, look at that. So the blue is good, the red is bad. So we have some faces here that are turned inside out. And this may not really matter because we may not use a texture here, we may just use a material. But if you're gonna be applying textures and taking your 3D models out to any other program, a game engine, any other 3D system, you need to have all of your faces, all of the normals facing in the correct direction. So what I'm gonna do is just go to face mode and alt click and alt shift click between faces here and just select all of these and this one here. And then let's go up to mesh, normals, flip. And there we go. Now all the blue is facing in one direction outward and all the red is facing inward. So that's good. Okay, now we can move on. Let's come back up here to the overlays and turn off face orientation. And then I will just select these two points and let's hit the F key again and close that off. Now it's flat and we don't want that and we're going to need it to connect up to here. So let's go ahead and add an edge loop with Control R. And then I'm gonna go to the front view and press Alt Z and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it out. Right, and then I'm gonna slide it up. I'm gonna hit G and just move it up to be in line with these guys here. Let's see how that works. Alt Z again, there we go. So now we're beginning to get that curve down to here. Now I think we're gonna need another edge loop in here, so I'll press Control R and drop one here. And then we may be able to pull this out as well just a little bit. I'll try that for now. And then we need to think about filling this in and how we're gonna do that. It looks to me to do that, we're gonna need another edge in here, right in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that, Control R and add that here. Now let's take these and begin moving these back here. We can do this in several different ways. We could extrude back over here and merge points. We could extrude down like this. So maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll hit E and then I'll just pull down a bit and then pull out until we get them in line. I'll press Alt Z in the front view and kind of move this to where they're kind of in line right there. And then we can merge these points together. I can click this and this, hit the M key and choose to merge at the last point selected. And these M at last. There we go. Now let's try that again. This time I can do it another way. We can try it another way. We could take these two and these two, hit the F key, and now we can just press Control R and add an edge loop here, and then combine or merge these two like that. Now, how are we gonna do this? Because if I closed up this face here, and then closed up this face here, we would have a triangle. And I'm gonna try and avoid triangles because these points can come through as indentations on the body of the car. So I'm gonna try and avoid triangles if I can. So let me undo this. There we go. And what I can do is just add another edge loop. So what I'll do is I'll take this, Alt click this and I'll hit G two times and slide this forward. So we kind of match up here. And then maybe I'll take uh, these right here and I'll hit G two times and slide this over just a bit. And then let's add one in here. Now we should be able to grab these four faces here. And then I guess we could just select these two and hit F and F and close that off. So we still have a point here on the curve, which we didn't with the triangle, but it is a quad, so I think we have a little more control over it. Let's, uh, let's tab back into object mode and take a look at it. We should smooth this new part, so I'll right click and choose Shade Smooth, and that takes care of that right there. Then let's go ahead and turn on the Subdivision Surface modifier and take a look at it. It's not bad, there's a little bump right along in here. 
And that's right in here. And I think it's because these are so close together. So one thing we could do here is control click that, hit G two times and slide this up. We could begin kind of rearranging some of these to just spread them out a bit. We could try that. And yeah, that's already beginning to help. All right, so we've begun creating the side of the car. In the next video, what let's do is continue this on down and back to the edge of the car door here.